WWE Executive Chairman Vince McMahon's name is spotted on a WWE WrestleMania 39 advertisement. Is this the first sign of Vince returning to WWE television? Is there animosity between The Rock and WWE after WrestleMania 39 match plans fell through? An update on WWE on BT Sport over here in the UK after Warner Bros. Discovery purchases BT Sport, renaming it TNT Sports. A negative reaction to Brock Lesnar versus Amos possibly at WrestleMania online. Speaking of negative reactions, there was a negative reaction to the finish of Edge versus Austin Theory on Monday Night Raw this week. An interesting note on Cody Rhodes and Paul Heyman's promo exchange this week on Raw. Grayson Waller overthrows NXT by hijacking the production truck on last night's episode on the USA Network. Bron Breaker retains the NXT Championship against Jinder Mahal. GD Jolin makes her return to WWE programming. Ilya Dragunov makes his in-ring WWE return after four months. John Cena comments ahead of his WWE television return next month on Monday Night Raw. Elimination Chamber breaks records for WWE and the reason why Chelsea Green was absent from Monday Night Raw has been revealed. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of WWE. You can tell, especially after that intro, can't you? Certainly, let's start off talking about Vince McMahon. Yes, the WWE Executive Chairman. An interesting name has appeared on a video advertising the match between Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 39. In a video clip, graphics for both Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes appear as movie posters, sticking, of course, with the WrestleMania Goes Hollywood theme. However, eagle-eyed viewers of Monday Night Raw spotted a particular name that has raised eyebrows on social media. Now, we've actually got the image in question here, so you don't have to doubt this is actually factually accurate, because indeed it is real. You can see it right there. That, they, now, you might have to squint a little bit. You might have to zoom in slightly. We've got it circled there. But as can be seen from the image on the screen right now, the directed by credit at the bottom of the list of the credit states, quote, directed by Vince McMahon. Obviously, this isn't a legitimate movie poster for an actual production, but many fans and critics have been waiting to see if and when Vince McMahon would get involved in creative since his return in an official capacity to WWE. Of course, he's back on the board of directors. He's the executive chairman. He's not the CEO. He's not the head of creative, but it really is one of the first times we've seen anything new involving Vince McMahon. Yes, we did see a clip of him talking about John Cena in a video package. However, that was slightly different because that was an old clip that was an old interview this is new now Triple H had previously stated that he and McMahon quotes may have discussions about WWE creative but Levesque makes the final decision on what happens on television whether or not that's still the case I'll leave that up to you but certainly eagle-eyed viewers said hey what's going on there is it just a nod to the WWE founder who's now backing the fold is it something more than that I'll leave that up to you to decide is there animosity between The Rock and WWE? Of course, at one point, many thought he was going to be involved in WrestleMania heavily. And while you may have heard some buzz about potential heat between The Rock and WWE over WrestleMania 39 plans, there is now an update. After there had been a back and forth with conflicting reports whether or not the WrestleMania 39 plans really ever included The Rock or not, finally, as the card continues to come together, the answer seems clear. However, with a recent uptick in buzz that there was some sort of animosity over the angle for this year's biggest show, a new report suggests that it's much ado about nothing. Uh, WrestleVote, sharing exclusively with Give Me Sports, said, quote, Is there animosity towards The Rock? I would imagine not. Like with Stone Cold Steve Austin, that door is always open. Maybe he said, let's do it next year. When those guys say yes, WWE is going to say okay. Now, WrestleVotes went on to add that while perhaps the internet had fantasy booked Dwayne Johnson's involvement, head of creative Triple H was never firmly planning on it. Uh, the report said, quote, I don't know how official the match ever was. There were obviously talks, but I don't believe any point in Triple H's tenure that the match was set in stone. How do you plan for something that you don't think is going to happen? The internet thought it was going to happen, but it never really uh, was alluded to on TV. They never sold that the match was going to happen, which I disagree with slightly because certainly there have been firm, firm seeds planted at various points when it comes to using the rock bottom and all that kind of stuff. Yes, nothing big, nothing overt, but certainly they were planting seeds if, 
if something could happen in the future. Now, of course, while fans won't get to see The Rock versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 39, it doesn't mean that there won't be any cameos from The Rock throughout WrestleMania weekend. The Rock is amongst most, one of probably the most famous of all WWE stars to go Hollywood. So a cameo from the People's Champion in some capacity is not entirely unlikely, although there is no suggestion an in-person appearance is currently planned for the show. But again, anything can and will happen between now and WrestleMania. This is a really interesting story for fans over here in the United Kingdom. An update has emerged on the joint venture between Warner Bros. Discovery and BT Sport, the home of WWE television in the UK. It was announced in May 2022 that Warner Bros. Discovery and BT Group would be forming a 50-50 sports venture together. The plan was for BT Sport and Eurosport UK to remain separate brands at first before being combined uh, under as a single brand. Per, per Sportsmail, which is the daily mail over here in the UK, BT Sport and Eurosport are set to announce several new channels ahead of the two brands pooling all of their live sports rights. With BT Sport expected to have a name change, it was also reported that a holding company has now been set up named Warner Brothers Discovery Sport. BT Sport is notably, of course, the home of WWE in the UK with Raw, SmackDown, and NXT airing through the network live every week. A press release discussing the new venture shared in September 2022 confirmed that WWE is one of the brands that will be available with the new sports venture. Warner Bros. Discovery, of course, notably owns TBS and TNT, the networks on which AEW Dynamite and AEW Rampage air on in the United States. AEW and Eurosport previously formed a partnership to broadcast weekly shows and pay-per-views in India, whereas in the UK, AEW airs online via Fight and on ITV4. However, the ITV deal is not a live uh, broadcast. It's later on in the week. And a bit of an update has come for this as well. The Times reports that BT Sports will relaunch as TNT Sports. The report also confirms that as of the time of recording this video, there will be, quote, no price increases expected for UK consumers, writing, quote, the new name has come about as a result of a joint venture between BT and Warner Bros. Discovery. Customers will not be hit with any immediate price increase and will continue to have coverage of the Champions League, that being football, until 2027, as well as some Premier League matches, Premiership Rugby and Champions Cup Rugby. They will also have access to Discovery Plus, which includes the full digital rights to the Paris 2024 Olympics. BT Sport, as I mentioned, is the home of WWE in the UK. The partnership with WWE is reportedly going to continue under the TNT Sports arrangement, which is fascinating because in America, AEW will air on TNT, that being Rampage, but in the UK, WWE will air on TNT. Isn't that strange? That's just the world that we're living in right now. Certainly interesting for UK fans. Now, what's the reaction been to Amas versus Brock Lesnar possibly happening at WrestleMania? As one would expect, not great. Fans have taken to social media to criticize a matchup tease for WrestleMania 39 ahead of next week's edition of Monday Night Raw. There are several potential opponents lined up for Brock Lesnar at the April event. One more emerged on this past Monday's edition of Raw with Amos issuing a challenge to Brock Lesnar for WrestleMania. Amos invited the Beast to show up on next week's show to accept his challenge. WWE has now now advertised this segment on Twitter, heavily hinting that Lesnar and Amos will face off, off, uh, off at the show of shows. Many fans have bashed the segment announcement with numerous Twitter users replying no when WWE shared a post questioning whether or not Lesnar will show up next Monday. Several fans have also speculated that Vince McMahon must have had some involvement with creative plans for this match to be made. It's worth noting that Lesnar vs. Amos hasn't officially been confirmed for WrestleMania 39 and many have pointed out that Amos may be a red herring to distract fans from Lesnar's true opponents for the event, which could be revealed at a later date. Lesnar last wrestled on the February 18 Elimination Chamber Premium Live event, losing to Bobby Lashley via disqualification after resorting to a low blow to escape from the Hurt Lock. Bray Wyatt has previously teased that he'd target the winner of the Lesnar vs. Lashley match, but with such a controversial finish, fans believe that neither competitor is safe from Wyatt. There had also been previously rumours that Lesnar would face Intercontinental Champion Gunther at WrestleMania 39. However, it was then reported that that match wasn't going to happen, so... I guess as of right now, it looks like it's going to be Bray Wyatt versus Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar versus Amas, and the fans aren't happy about it. 
Now, speaking of things the fans aren't particularly happy with, they're not happy, some certainly aren't, with the finish of the Austin Theory versus Edge match from this past week's edition of Raw. On the episode, US champion Austin Theory took on WWE Hall of Famer Edge. Whilst Theory, in a WWE digital exclusive, would rate his performance highly, others were quite not so complimentary with their responses. Taken to social media, fans criticized the match, which saw interference from Finn Balor attacking Edge, with one fan tweeting, quote, getting board of the same old finishes match after match. Oh look, someone's come out to interfere. Or the person at ringside interfered. Another fan also opinioned on the match, echoing a desire to see more diversity in creativity, saying, quote, I'd like to see him win without interference because all of his title defenses end up with someone helping him out. It's kind of boring now, given the fact he's a good wrestler. Yet another fan noticed the running theme for Theory, stating, quote, back-to-back title defenses ended with someone interfering to help Theory retain. Wash, rinse, repeat. There was also a comment that said predictable, repetitive trash ending again. There were even questions over the overall booking of the United States champion, such as, quote, you keep booking Austin to look so weak. Why? Has he ever had a clean win? One fan, however, did point out, quote, one word for you, heal. It wasn't all just negative opinions towards Austin Theory's latest title defense, however, with another fan commenting, quote, that's how heels works, and he becomes one of the biggest heels in the whole company. That's smart booking. A fan saw great things for Theory's future, despite the criticism that swirled around them, suggesting, quote, after seeing Austin Theory's performance yesterday at WWE Chamber and today at Raw, I must say he's going to be a huge superstar in the future. He's delivering banger after banger. And my question to all of you guys is, what did you think of the finish on Raw? Is it getting repetitive? Is outside interference getting to become a crutch under Triple H's creative management? Or is it just a case of, again, a heel being a heel? Speaking of Raw, an interesting note from the Paul Heyman Cody Rhodes segment this past week. Of course, Heyman would warn Rhodes of what is to come at WrestleMania 39 when he faces Roman Reigns and made some personal suggestions towards the American Nightmare's wife, Brandy Rhodes. After the episode of Raw, Rhodes would comment on the segment apparently being cut short. Further details have now been revealed in the producer list for this week's episode of The Red Brand. Whilst Michael Hayes has been the producer for a lot of the Bloodline content on WWE and was the producer for Sammy's segment, on that episode of Raw. Hayes was the producer of Rhodes and Heyman's segment from the February 6th episode of Raw. But for the February 20 episode, however, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select reports that there was no producer listed for the Cody Rhodes and Paul Heyman segment, with some suggesting that this is a continuation of what we had seen previously, that both men wrote their own parts for the February 6th promo and were able to tell a story that hit home emotionally. It's possible that WWE management are of the opinion that both men are capable of executing their own segment without the need of a backstage producer or it could just be a one-off thing but certainly an interesting note nevertheless now let's talk some nxt from last night and last night we saw a hijacking of the wwe production truck um whilst one star uh well one star may be suspended from wwe that apparently did not stop him from paying homage to a very annoying super bowl commercial and threatening Shawn michaels at the same time while bron breaker still celebrated his title victory over jinder mahal which we'll talk about shortly fans attention was drawn away from the in-ring jubilation as it seemed that someone had taken over television and what appeared in the moment as someone taking over your feed to select the peacock app peacock act and then scroll past elimination chamber to fix on nxt's upcoming standard deliver premium live event graphic finally grayson waller was revealed as the man behind the remote telling the nxt crowd that he had taken over the production truck he was taking a page out of the dx playbook with this hostile takeover demanding to see Shawn michaels and, and not just see him anywhere in the ring for a very special episode of the Grayson Waller effect. Now, obviously, we'll have to stay tuned to whether or not Shawn Michaels accepts the challenge, if Shawn Michaels is going to indeed have a match against Grayson Waller at some point. I doubt it. It could be the impending debut of Dragon Lee, maybe in WWE, or maybe we'll see Mr. WrestleMania return on the weekend of WrestleMania. And we spoke about Braun Breaker. He is still the NXT champion. After coming out to challenge Breaker last week, this week's title bout featured former WWE champion Jinder Mahal looking to claim NXT's biggest prize. The match had been rolling along until the Creed brothers attempted uh, appeared in an attempt to neutralize Mahal's advantage in the towering Indus Sheer who had accompanied him to the ring. As the big back and forth matchup went into the final third, there were powerful moves left to come, including a vicious running knee from Mahal and a monster-sized Frankensteiner from Breaker there were plenty of big moves in the match but finally in the end Breaker continued to stand tall as NXT champion as he put away Jinder Mahal via pinfall after a big spear in the middle of the ring and as I mentioned after the match it was hijacked by Grayson Waller as well 
Speaking of NXT, we saw a return last night. We actually saw quite a few. But one is Gigi Dolan after the shocking portrayal at the hands of JC Jane, turning on her toxic attraction partner, Gigi Dolan. Dolan has returned, making a fierce return to attack Jane during her match with Indy Hartwell. The interference may have caused Hartwell the dis disqualification, but the brawl that ensued was just as compelling as the match. Brawling up the ramp, GD Dolan was clearly out to settle the score as the two continued to battle, presumably continuing their massive feud all the way to the upcoming NXT premium live event, that being Stand and Deliver on April 1st, 2023. I would think that's where this is going, as seeing the former Toxic Attraction partners facing off at the big event. Ilya Dragunov also made his in-ring return last night, having his first match in four months. On last night's episode of NXT, a big match kicked off the night when Trick Williams took on the returning Ilya Dragunov with JD McDonough on commentary. This was Dragunov's first match in WWE in four months, recently making his return to the brand and putting the aforementioned McDonough on notice. In the end, the former NXT UK champion picked up the victory over Trick Williams via the pinfall and engaged in a mighty stare down with McDonough after the match. Dragunov had actually worked a house show match against Williams on February 11th but this was his first outing on TV since October and commentary was selling it as his first match in four months he has been absent recently from NXT due to visa issues the storyline reason being an injury suffered at the hands of McDonough again that looks like another match that is set up for stand and deliver uh, in April now, switching attention to the main roster once again, John Cena, of course, is set to make his return to WWE TV in March, and he's now taken to Twitter to comment on his upcoming WWE appearance, pointing out that we are on the road to WrestleMania 39. Cena tweeted, quote, from the streets of Melbourne straight to Boston to see my WWE family. Thank you, the TD Garden, for allowing me to be a part of a can't-miss Raw on the road to WrestleMania. Following numerous teases, it was reported earlier this month that John Cena versus United States Champion Austin Theory is, quote, locked in for WrestleMania 39. Of course, Theory even hinted as much this past Monday night on Raw, saying he was going to welcome Cena back to Raw when Cena does indeed make his return. Elimination Chamber was this past weekend in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, and it was a record-breaking weekend for WWE, with the previous premium live event Royal Rumble also delivering a record gate and viewership. Anticipation was high for how this next stop on the road to WrestleMania would do. Now, through a press release on the WWE website, they've announced that it broke the record for the all-time gate and viewership. The press release uh, says, quote, WWE today announced that the 2023 Elimination Chamber, which emanated from the Bell Center in Montreal, became WWE's highest grossing and most viewed Elimination Chamber event in company history. Viewership of the 2023 Elimination Chamber saw a 54% increase versus the previous record set in 2022. It also marked the largest gate ever for any WWE events held in Montreal and the largest gate in the history of Elimination Chamber. In addition, 2023 Elimination Chamber broke the all-time event merchandise record and generated the highest grossing priority pass fan experience packages for any non-Big 5 premium live event through WWE's partnership with On Location. Elimination Chamber sponsorship revenue was up nearly 300% versus 2022. On social, content featuring WWE superstars Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn generated nearly 20 million views across WWE social platforms. Triple H shared that the Elimination Chamber was the largest gate in WWE history in Montreal, also in the post-show press conference. Certainly a massive show uh, for WWE and a very successful one as well. Finally, Chelsea Green was... On TV, but not on TV this week for Raw. And an exp explanation as to why comes from Sean Ross Apple Fightful Select. One WWE talent that wasn't allowed to make it to Raw, but they did a good job for covering it. On the February 20 episode of Raw, WWE did an angle where Chelsea Green was sent to Ottawa, Illinois, instead of Ottawa, Canada. This was to help bridge the gap until they were out of Canada, as the Canadian Green is currently landlocked and unable to return to Canada. As of now, Chelsea is still waiting for her green card and then will be able to to return. Green has been landlocked for months, dating back to last summer. On Monday, Green was in New York for the screening of The Last Match, a pro wrestling rock musical, which stars her husband, Matt Cardona. So that's the reason she wasn't at Raw. She doesn't have a green card. Even though she's from Canada, it's all very bizarre. But there you go, guys. It's the latest WWE news for you. Be sure to smash the like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. Let me know your thoughts on today's WWE news stories in the comment section below. Remember, you can join the WN365 roster by clicking that join button, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.